it. I call this meeting of the Mount Vernon Independent School District School District to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Do you, I have a motion to certify the agenda? Motion made. Motion made by Linda. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Kyle. All four? 7 now. All right. Kyle, would you say a prayer for us? Yes. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for today, uh, what today is about, Veterans Day. Just uh, put your hand on the past and the present. We just thank you for them, for, uh, for them fighting for us, and just watch over them. Lord, watch over the students and the teachers of Mount Vernon for the rest of the year, and just be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation and under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. <coughs> Special All, right. All right, let's let's recognize some outstanding staff members for Mount Vernon ISD. And uh, we are going to start with our Mount Vernon Elementary uh, Teacher of the Month, Ms. Laura Norwood. All right, let me read a little bit about Ms. Norwood. It says, um, she does so much for our staff and students, much of which is behind the scenes. She was a big part of our fundraising efforts and volunteered to be slime pied and bubbled. <laughs> she works tirelessly to prepare students for the annual turkey trot, all while focusing on teaching students to set individual goals for themselves. She has implemented a new program to help students keep track of their laps on the track. She upkeeps the elementary PE Facebook page so that she can share success from the gym. Coach Norwood serves on the campus leadership team and is our process champion team as we work to successfully implement capturing kids' hearts. She does everything that is asked to do with her whole heart. Ms. Norwood makes PE a bright spot in the lives of our students by providing activities that make physical education fun. Ms. Breeden, our PE assistant, states that all the kids love her and she goes out of her way to show them how much she cares for all 635 of them. When she sees them outside of school, she is always quick to brag about their progress in PE. We are thankful for Coach Norwood and for all that she brings to Mount Vernon Elementary School. Elementary Teacher of the Month, Ms. Laura Roll. Congratulations. Ms. Jessica Gill, teacher. You want to say anything? Thank you. Just thank you very much. And what are we? What do you? What I hear you were doing today? And we have turkey bowl tonight. Turkey bowling tonight. <laughs> oh, tonight. very good. Okay. In ten minutes. In ten minutes. <laughs> All right. We got to be quick. She can take one more picture. All right. Next, we are going to have our middle school teacher of the month, Miss Sawyer Cunningham. It says, Ms. Cunningham is an exceptional individual who embodies the spirit of dedication and compassion with our, within our educational community. She has a great attitude and consistently demonstrates an unwavering willingness to provide support to her students and colleagues alike. Whether it's a simple word of encouragement or a helping hand during a hectic day, she is always looking for ways to assist those around her, truly making a difference in our campus environment. She goes above and beyond, always willing to do more and to go that extra mile to ensure her campus is not just a place of learning, but an enjoyable and nurturing space for everyone. Her students rave about her classes. They appreciate not only her engaging teaching style, but also the genuine care she shows for their well-being. She consistently finds ways to make every student and staff member feel important and loved. What sets her apart is her ability to connect lessons to real-life applications, making it easier for students to grasp the material and relate it to their own experiences. She understands that learning goes beyond textbooks and strives to prepare her students for the world outside the classroom. In a time when educators face numerous challenges, she stands out as a beacon of positivity, support, and inspiration. Middle School Teacher of the Month, Ms. Sawyer Cunningham. Thank you. Oh, 
Do you want to say anything? No, thank you. No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Our high school teacher of the month, Miss Olivia Juarez. Says Ms. Juarez continues to be an exceptional leader and teacher and leader at Mount Vernon High School. She exemplifies professionalism and reliability in all areas. Her classroom is a model of preparation, organization, and effective instruction, reflecting the significant time she invests in creating engaging lessons for her students. She always implements the curriculum while adhering to campus <coughs> initiatives, ensuring that students are both challenged and supported. She balances high expectations with empathy, allowing her students to thrive because they know she genuinely cares for their successes while holding them accountable. Beyond her classroom role, Ms. Warren serves as the math department head, fostering collaboration among her colleagues to promote success in all Mount Vernon math courses. We are truly grateful to have Ms. Warren's contributions to her students and our school community, making her a deserving candidate for Teacher of the Month. Ms. Olivia Warris. You want to say anything? Um, just thank you very much and thank the board for taking a few minutes of your time to recognize a different teacher every month and staff member. Appreciate it. Congratulations. And our support <laughs> staff member of the month, Ms. Jamie Young. Since Ms. Young stands out as a beacon of dedication and support, she is always willing to lend an additional hand, stepping in whenever and whenever and wherever she is needed, embodying the spirit of teamwork and selflessness. Ms. Young works tirelessly to support our students, ensuring that each one feels valued and empowered. She doesn't just stop at the regular responsibilities of her role. She consistently offers extra support to those who need it most, making a significant impact on their lives. Her commitment to her students goes beyond the classroom. It's in her actions, her encouragement, and her unwavering belief in their potential. As a dependable staff member, Ms. Young is not only responsive to requests, but also takes the initiative to identify needs before they are even expressed. She does not wait for directives. Instead, she anticipates challenges and steps up to address them, demonstrating true leadership and a proactive spirit. Her dedication and willingness to go above and beyond inspires us all to strive for excellence in our own roles. Support member of the month. Yes, Miss Jamie Young. Congratulations. Want to say anything? I think that everybody that makes my job easier because without this board and the admin and everybody, we couldn't do what we do. So thank you. Thank you very much. Well, if the four of you would come back, is it one more picture with the board, please, as a group? Ladies, congratulations. to our information items. Do you have our enrollment totals for us? Yes, ma'am. So as of November the 4th, we have dropped down a few students to an even 1,600 students, uh, which is still up um, 47 above this time last year. And our campus department updates, Ms. George. As Ms. George is coming forward, I'll let you know that we will not have a high school report this week. The high school administration is at uh, David Reeves' uh, um, service, which is taking place in Mount Pleasant. So they're there uh, supporting school for that. All right. Mount Vernon High School.
starting elementary, and that's not the still on October 15th. We had 370 people attend. It was a great night of fellowship. We had a new baby born into the Mount Vernon Elementary family. Evelyn Jane is the precious daughter of Mrs. Ham, one of our first grade teachers. Mrs. Christenberry returned November 1st. We are super glad to have her back. What a blessing she is to our campus. Um, we are in the process of hosting our second round of MTSS meetings. Our average population has increased from 25% last year to 56% this school year, which presents some new challenges. So we're working to ensure each student in need is receiving targeted instruction to meet their individual needs. We currently have 201 students who have been identified as needing math, reading, or behavioral supports. So we're working hard. Our interventionists are, are um, coughing for sure. <laughs> uh, we, that held, oh. <laughs> sorry. we held our second student awards assembly on October 30th. One student per class was recognized for Tiger Leader, and one student per class was recognized for the character trait of October, which was responsibility. So very important. Turkey Trot was held last Thursday. We had six students make the top 20 roster. So those kids are lightning fast. <laughs> um, and then so I asked, oh, I'm, that's the one, sorry. Um, we had an additional day of capturing kids' hearts training on October 22nd. We had 12 staff members attended the Process Champions training, and they will have a vital role of the implementation of CKH on our campus. That was a great day of learning. Um, Mount Vernon Elementary had an attendance rate of 96.65 last week. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> daily attendance since October 7th is 96.18, so we're getting there. Last week we had one day that we only had 14 kids absent. That is really, oh, wow. really celebrating that. We'll do some attendance awards in December. <laughs> And then we held a Veterans Day assembly this morning. Each grade level, level participated by singing a song. Mrs. Swatson worked hard to have my vision come to life. I, they're, the staff is fabulous. If I have a crazy idea, I'll say, okay, who wants to help me? And she stepped up to the plate. It was so precious. So we've got some video if y'all want to see it. And um, we appreciate her willingness to do what it takes. Our very own JP Mosley was our guest speaker. He did a fabulous job in explaining what service means to um, what is that sacrificial service. And the veterans in attendance all reported to have felt very honored. Coach Norris has got a painting plan on today, so he'll be there. And then uh, we start each day in each meeting with Tell Me Something Good from our Capturing Kids Hearts. And here are some good things from staff and students. I implemented student ambassadors and they have been doing a great job of greeting people and letting them know what we are learning. The students love this, that's from Mrs. Contreras. The turkey trot was successful and no one was hurt. That was from Ms. Aiken from the <laughs> clinic. <laughs> students are making progress in intervention from Mrs. Stroman and Mrs. Brophy. Our third graders will be learning about Mount Vernon's history this week when we attend our field trip downtown. It might sound like a small field trip, but I think learning about the history of our hometown can make these students feel like they are closely connected to their community. They might not always be proud of their family or their home life, but I think I like to think that after the field trip, they are proud of the community that they come from. That was from Mrs. McAdoo. My good thing is how well the students sang and acted respectfully during the assembly this morning. That was from Mrs. Watson. Lunchtime is something good because I get to visit with my friends. That's merit. And then turkey trot was hard, but I finished. <laughs> and then Hudson says, I love the four day week. <laughs> We've got great kiddos. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. George. I really try not to let the attendance thing get in our hands. So, Julia Drenz is yeah. sending out this email every week about who's on top with attendance and it's been back and forth between us and elementary and uh, more of the receipt of like not not a lot of back and forth so on that note and just so y'all are aware we are we take attendance per period that's all day long. They take attendance in the morning at 10. So anybody absent after 10, 9.30 is included <laughs> on their attendance. So ours is per period all day long. Um, I do want to give a shout out to high school for being a consistent third place. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got real big. At least we got some big. Um, again, I know Dr. Cole said the 1600, we were at 1600, um, which was above last year. I believe um, all those extra kiddos are at the middle school. Um, we have gotten, I feel like we get four or five kids every week. 
we maybe lose one or two and we're getting four or five. So they're all uh, middle school. Um, our average daily attendance, although below elementary, is still at a nice 95% or higher. Um, so it's still um, commendable for sure. Um, same thing with uh, elementary. Our at risk information looks about the same um, that um, Ms. George shared. It's kind of similar. So um, today we did sell, um, celebrate our Veterans Day, our Veterans with our Veterans Day program. Um, I think that's the first time that we've had or hosted one in a long time at the middle school. We had 34 veterans in attendance and recognized over 50 individuals um, within our community. Um, our student council president, McKenna Gertis, she did her welcome speech. She was very nervous. Um, we had three fifth graders recite the pledges. Our band played the national anthem. We had seventh and eighth grade boys present each military branch flag. And we had Colonel Cynthia Lydon. She gave our student body a speech about the importance of our veterans and recognizing them. I believe it was a really good um, turnout, I, I feel. Um, Dr. McCullough, you were there, so. Yeah. Good one. Okay, yep. perfect. Um, our cheerleaders won third place this Sunday. They went to uh, the North Texas Regionals in Rock Walk at Rock Rock Rocky High School and they earned um, a bid to the national competition in January. That'll be in Dallas. So they did really well on that. Eighth grade boys finished their season with a win Thursday against Plumbers, which was a good, I think a good ending for them. They had kind of a up and down season and they were looking, they were glad to have that. So Southern eighth grade volleyball team went undefeated. They were 10-0 in our eighth grade. Um, a team went nine and one, and both were district champs. So that's our volleyball team. Our basketball teams, I believe, are both currently undefeated. Boys are starting today. Practice or game? Practice today. Yeah. yeah practice. So they're getting geared up again. I know I mentioned this last time with our seventh grade leaders working on their Christmas plays to form for the elementary and the Mount Vernon house. Eighth grade one-eyed clay is getting started. Um, another competition is in December. And then our big thing that we have coming up is Deck the Halls Knot for our um, community. Our staff is decorating our hallways in Christmas cheer, and um, it's, a, of course, a competition. The winning team will win um, a $250, it's $250 worth of gift cards that they're gonna split, that's been donated. Um, so, of course, it's, it's, it's getting serious. The event is an opportunity for our students and parents to come walk the halls, see student work, and visit with our teachers and shop at the Tiger General Spirit Shop, which is um, items that was donated from our PTO who has um, unfortunately had to kind of close their doors this year due to some health reasons and stuff. So, um, and then we'll have after that, our NBISD band will be performing at 6.30. So hopefully it's a way to get all of our community members up here and see what's going on, all the good things going on at the middle school. And then last but not least, our award ceremony will be December 19th. And then we'll take a nice needed Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Let me say something. Uh, Mr. Glover is, is not here. Uh, I know I've said that, but they are at the funeral for um, student David Reeve, uh, who did pass away this last week. And if the board is okay with this, why don't we just do a little moment of silence uh, in honor of, of our student, please, if that's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, we have our construction, construction update. update. We do. It'll be great. Yeah.
and I believe their inspection, I think Tim, our superintendent, will be having inspection, overhead inspection for the car on Friday. So we should be able to start closing up those ceilings and uh, unit B, as we're preparing to call it. And then the units D and E, which is the storm shelter slash cafeteria right out here, is, is a lot of dirt moving on. You're probably wondering what that is. So that's just moisture conditioning, the, the dirt. So you gotta bring in or take out a lot of dirt, bring in select fill, so we get a good foundation, and it's just a long process. Uh, so that's what's going on in that area, and then the overall site work. Uh, you all seen some site utilities going on over here. I know on the I'm getting twisted on the back side up against the fire lane is the new storm line, which is the storm water that's kind of come off the act facility, come out that come out the south end and. So that's what y'all see. And then the electrical. So we've got a lot of the electrical up to, I think, the sidewalk. I'm twisted. <laughs> the sidewalk here going back towards that south end. So that's a lot. We're moving, but it's 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 going pretty good so far. We've hit a couple lines, but water lines, but we've had to we've had to slap their hand. So you know, part of the storm drain is what they're talking about. What they, what they're having, what they've spent some time the last week or two doing is having to get into the ceiling roof area of the CTE building yes. and the gym because all of that roof water uh, was coming out front. So they've had to go in and reroute some of that, and now they're working on the storm drainage that is that was designed to go underneath through the corridor and down the edge of the high school and that's what they're working on yeah. to get all that water so pushed all, away from there. All the roof drains on the, this new CTE is dumping out on the south end where we're digging now. So we're having to we've capped all those uh, while it's dumping there until we get the reroute on the uh, by, by the tree. There's a big tree in the front so that's where we're going to dump the temporary. We, we've got to go we have to have it going somewhere so yeah. yeah. But that's, that's yeah. Another part of that which you see an action item one of your action items, might as well talk about that while we're here as well, is the um, fiber and everything coming in um, to the district initially fed into the library, which of course the library is gone. And so they pulled it back to the ag side and thought we were gonna be able to keep it on that awning going down to the admin, uh, but that awning's about to be gone. And so Taryn and Jackson have talked with um, uh, Peoples, and again, we have a bid there, but they're gonna come back and gonna end up putting it in a closet um, in the back end of the um, gym back in here is a, is a permanent location. Found a place in there that doesn't really have anything in it, but they're going to be able to put it and run it back out behind everything and come back in there. Did I explain that exactly right? Sound right? So when you pull it out of the ag, it cuts the high school. So now you have to reroute the high school to a permanent location to go all the way around. So it's just permanent, keeps it away from construction and keeps the internet going for the school. No. I think they said maybe a couple hours of downtime because everything will be pre-done when it's pulled out. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, so all the digging everything we're gonna do is why we're not here. So which will be good. Good there? Any other questions? Anything? When will the auditorium be done? I believe we've got that being done at the end of February. Yes. Mid February twenty twenty five. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking about a lot of years. So I want to make yeah. sure we're talking yeah. about yeah. the correct year. But like I think concerts will we will we have any spring those? could like Christmas yeah. concerts. Not won't have it in there in Christmas. But we could have their spring concerts in there. Okay. Yeah. If we have like a Christmas concert, they would move it to the gym. I think they're doing that in the gym. Miss Bates, is that right? Yes. I know they had one had a sixth grade concert in there a couple weeks ago. Yeah. The, the um, music, the band will be in there, and then our award ceremony will be in there. <clears throat> And that's where we hosted our Veterans Day program as well. So. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, the new ag so is it getting close? It's it's still? it's very close. Uh, met with them again today. Um, what they're just finishing up some things. Still waiting on the city and safe built uh, to approve some permits. I talked with uh, Craig Lynn home today, and he got in touch with Safe Built, and they are saying they are moving that up to the front of the work that they're doing. So Stancil tells me that once they get a permit, they'll be finished in three weeks. So again, they're just finishing up some inside work now and about to do some painting and um, 
out, only really outside work that they have left to do is the sewer. So, but they're once they get a permit, they're three weeks away. Which again, that that works good. I mean, for Jackson, so that they can they're going to do a little bit of prep work on uh, the ag building before they tear it down. And they're I think Dustin told me he's scheduled around January twentieth. Does that sound right to you? And that's what they're looking. That's, that, they go inside the yep. original our original yep. schedule. So yep. it's about, about that time frame. So if, if we can get that permit pretty quickly, then we're still going to be on schedule to be able to have them into the welding lab fully by the first of the next semester. Is uh, Ag Mechanic the only thing that's happening out there right now? Mm -hmm. Everybody else yep. is in here? Everybody else is downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was not able to be here tonight, but Drew did send me an update in regard to the football stadium. Buildings under bleachers, the interior finish out is pushing to be finished next week. Uh, after that, they'll power wash, clean bleachers immediately upon finish the buildings under the bleachers. Um, demo existing concession buildings surrounding paving immediately after the, we host our what we would think would be our final playoff game. Um, start new permanent fence immediately after final home playoff game as well. Uh, baseball, softball, tennis, electrician is on site this week, tying in permanent power, finishing their punch list items in the dugouts and installing the tennis outlets. Uh, backstop pads for baseball and softball on both will be completely replaced uh, under warranty. And as soon as electricians finish up this week, the remaining sidewalk flat work will be poured immediately. Joint sealed landscape ears will be hydro seed and the existing flat work and stone walls will be power washed. So that's Hellas's update. Any questions on, on Hellas's? Did I need to find out anything else on from them? Were there some issues with the tarp? That he, that's not in there, but yes, that okay. on the softball, yes. Yeah, that's, that's supposed that's to be addressed the as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. All right, um, now we have our House Bill 3 goal update. Ms. Taryn. Okay. House Bill 3, the update. we be able to put, yep, there it is. Oh, got one. That one, is that one up? So if we do have it on the screen, if you want to see it on the screen, or if it's in your, it's in your board packet as well. I want to show you, this is the update for the House Bill 3 goals that we have. Um, Again, I just I put the last two years reference just so you'd see. Uh, first goal is early childhood literacy. Uh, it's the percent of third grade students that score meets grade level or above on star reading. The goal started out in 2020 was increased from 25% to 52%. You'll see this past year in 2024 um, exceeded that goal uh, greatly to 69%. That's the, that, can you, do you have the update one? That's, that's the goal itself that we'll get to in a minute. Yeah, those are the goals we'll get to. Should be one that just says um, House Bill 3 goal update. There's one that's stated 11-11-3-3-4, and there's one that's, uh, that, does the next two years so it's the one that's they, they look very similar there you go that's the one right there there you go so that's all right that's the early childhood literacy you see if you can tell i tried to do green or red uh if it was above or below the uh, uh goal um and you've seen 2023 even we're above the goal 2024 we grew again still above the goal uh gives you a breakdown on underneath there uh on 2024 is the only year i put on here for this presentation tonight showing you where we are on closing the gaps on student groups. Uh, the only student group that we did not meet the goal uh, was two or more uh, races uh, on that goal. If you'll go to the next one, Taryn, is going to be the early childhood math goal. That is the percent of third grade students that score meets grade level or above on STAR math will increase from 45% to 65% by June of 2024. As you can see, uh, last two years we've missed the, the goal that we had stated just barely. Again, this past year, uh, just missed it by 2%. Uh, that is the goal that we will start out. You'll see when we get to that section of the board meeting here in just a minute for the new goal. You can see underneath, we were just, again, um, 
just below on our student groups as well, closing the gaps. Um, on each one, we missed just a little bit, and um, we'll reestablish those goals here later on the board meeting as well. The third goal on the House Bill 3 goals is the percentage of students that meet the criteria for CCMR will increase from 65 to 85 percent by August 2024. Um, on the report from TA, they're, they lag a year behind. That's why you don't see one for 2024. Uh, as you can see, in 2022, we were up. And then they That's when they changed a little bit of the CCMR, uh, how that's figured. So we missed it just by percent, a little over a percent uh, in 2023. And uh, so this next year, we'll show the 2024 of what that is. Um, you can also see the high school students, the closing the gaps by student groups. Not all student groups are represented, but you can see where we where we met those. We were above in African American, above in Hispanic, um, are really about on target with Hispanic, just right below on um, the white student population, and uh, we were above on economic disadvantage. Um, but that's the update from where we were this past year for those House Bill three goals, and then we'll talk. We'll look at the goals moving forward later in the um, in the board meeting. Any questions regarding this? All right. And then no one for open forum. Oh, I skipped ahead. Public hearing 2022-2023 Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas report. Mr. Craver, I assume that's you. <laughs> All right. First report came out based on uh, data from 22-23. We got 100. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well yeah. then. Can you get better than 100? That's right. That's Very awesome. good. Superior. Uh, everything was good. I think uh, last year's information we got deemed just one on 198. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was. But what I want to think it was administrative ratio. Administrative ratio is what it was. And um, we were. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Any questions on that? <laughs> how that works? Or quite a few things that go into it. But a hundred's a hundred. We'll take it. Not going to ask you any questions on that. Well done. Thank you. Uh, you need to give a patch for his loads there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We don't have anyone no, for open form, so we will move on. Uh, I have a motion to um, approve the consent uh, to consider to approve the consent agenda. Motion made by Aaron. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Kyle. All four. That's a. Can did you vote? Oh yeah. Okay. Seven now. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Okay. Action <laughs> items. Consider approval of vendor to purchase two new ovens for the middle school and elementary cafeteria. Yes, so um, Ms. Heather's put this on here. As you see in the description, uh, both current cafeterias have ovens that are over 10 years old. Um, she's needing new ovens that will have more <laughs> abilities, such as steam, air frying, grilling, roasting. Uh, each unit will cost $34,630.41 for a total cost of $69,260.82. and cents. Um, She is requesting to spend that out of the, her cafeteria fund balance. Uh, which she has, uh, but she will still be within three months of operation in the budget as needed. So I'd make that recommendation to you as a board to approve that. And that money can only be used for cafeteria related yeah, expenses. Cafeteria. Yes. yes, yes, ma'am. All right. Do I have a motion to approve uh, the vendors as presented to purchase two new ovens for the middle school and elementary cafeterias? Sure. Motion made by Kathy. Is there a second? Yeah. Seconded by Linda. All four. 7 -0. Thank you very much. All right. And then Dr. McCullough, uh, you have some goals to present to us. Yes, ma'am. If you will, Karen, if you'll put them, if you'll go back to, uh, we, we can start right there. We'll start with that one. Let me get back on mine. First one, uh, if you remember in our team of eight, we worked through, uh, through, through this goal. And so bringing this uh, for you for your approval tonight, uh, that goal here is, if you remember through our team of eight, talked about, um, 
um, somewhere between three and five. We've got four goals to present to you tonight. Of course, House Bill three goals gives us three of them, and this will be a fourth one. So this one here is Mount Vernon ISD will recruit, hire, and retain a high-performing faculty and staff of student-centered lifelong learners. We will establish an environment where we support our employees and provide opportunities for professional growth. Our district will be a destination of choice where the best and brightest educators and staff desire to spend their careers working with their students. Um, we talk through uh, each evidence of attainment. We have three of those. Um, first one talks about a, a conduct state interviews. And uh, the second one is uh, in regard to HR and say a minimum of two job fairs and we'll develop a best workplace strategies for the March board meeting. And we will work on a grow your own teacher program that we will uh, present to you as a board at the July board meeting. Other evidence of attainment um, will be to do a um, satisfaction surveys again and stay interviews with our staff. And uh, we'll provide the synopsis. I will provide you that information at the June board meeting um, to go along with that. So the other, any questions in regard to this goal here, this leadership goal? Okay, House Bill 3 goals. As you saw a while ago, I've included 2024 on each one of these again to see where we are. Uh, the goal when we started out for, to get to 2024 was 52% for the literacy goal. Um, so since we hit it 69, you'll see we've bumped that up to be consistent with that. So for 2025 through 2028, the result is to get to 75% of students uh, at meets are above by 2028. Student groups are adjusted down below as well um, to help reach those goals as well. Math on the early childhood math goal. As you saw, we were we were at 63%, had a goal of 65, kept that for year 25, uh, bumped it up a couple in 26, 27, up to 28. And so the goal itself is to increase from 65% of our third grade students that meets or above on math to 70% by 2028. And again, the student groups were adjusted there as well. And then the third one is the CCMR progress measure. And, well, I gave, sent the wrong one. Sorry. That was supposed to be, Do we have the right that's one? the progress measure and not the, um, let me see if I have that on, on the all seater. Oh, man. Probably not. Nope. I apologize. Yeah, same one on the board, but yeah, same one up there because that's what she has as well. Mm, I don't have that. I didn't copy the right one. Would you go back, please? Would you go back to the the update? No. The up the one that showed the update, the other one you had up there a while ago. Uh, that, no, back you go back. You were right there. Uh, is that the one? That that's is the end. one. That is the this one. Is the first one. Yep, that, that, that's what I want. So the, the goal, and I apologize, I did not get her the right one to put up there. But the goal starts out at um, starts out at 85% at 2024, still there, and increases up to 90% by 2028. That's the actual goal. Will be 90% of the students will be uh, CC, will meet the CCMR by 2028. Apologize, I gave you the wrong one. So. So those are goals. Those would be my recommendation for board approval uh, for the goals moving forward. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, superintendent board goals as presented? Motion made. Motion made by Linda. Second? Seconded by Kathy. All four? 7-0? Thank you very much. And then action item C, consider approval of vendor quote from People's Communication to relocate fiber optics as needed for bond construction and completion. Okay. As was, uh, as we shared with you just a while ago, that quote uh, to move all of that, they included in your board book, in your board packet, a map to actually show where they were doing that and what it was going to be. But the total cost of that, which should be a permanent fix and they should not have to come back and do it again is forty three thousand three forty two and ninety five cents, and I would make that recommendation for the board to approve that for people to do to relocate fiber optics as needed for bond construction completion. Okay. Do you, any questions on that? So when we do that, will that be a that's a done deal, right? Like should be. Yeah. We won't have to worry about doing it again. Right. It'll also allow them to run. 
they're not big in, they're not supposed to be big in these locations. So. Yeah. If you look at the map, it routes it behind the maintenance barn, back up to, back up to the side of the high school here, which is the people's main line coming into the high school. So that's the hope is to keep it away from anything else. Gotcha. Do I have a motion to approve the vendor quote from People's Communication to relocate fiber optics um, as needed for bond construction completion? I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Linda. All for? 7 0. Thank okay. you very much. And it is now 5.56 p.m. We will convene a closed session for personal matters pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074 and to address legal concerns, implications, and questions regarding the posted agenda, agenda items pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.071. 7.48 p.m. We are convening back into open session. And then, uh, Dr. McCullough, do we have any professional contracts to consider? Yes, make a recommendation for Linda Marshall as a middle school English teacher, as a part-time position to help out with, uh, as you heard Ms. Bates talk earlier about the large seventh grade class, and that is to give some, some help and some relief there. Okay. All right, do I have a motion to accept the professional contracts as recommended? I make the motion. Ms. Robinson Second. makes the motion, seconded by Ms. Baird. All for? 7 0. And do we have any resignations to acknowledge? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, this meeting is now adjourned. It is 7 49 p.m.